If you have used any large language model based application, you are probably aware that one of the limiting factors of these systems is the limited context window or memory these models can hold. For example, GPT-4 has a context window of 8,000 tokens. In comparison, Llama 2 has a context window of around 4,000 tokens. For reference, 100 tokens are almost equal to 75 words. This really limits the context that the large language model can use to generate answers. There are a number of open source projects which are looking to extend the context window of these LLMs. There is this new project called Memory GPT, which is proposing a very innovative approach in order to extend the memory of these LLMs. In this video, we are going to look at Memory GPT and understand how it works. Then I'll show you how to run this on your local machine and also how to actually customize different options within Memory GPT. So let's get started. First, we will look at a high level overview of this system. And then I'll show you how to run this locally on your own machine. The paper is called Memory GPT towards LLM as operating systems. If you are interested more in learning about it, link is going to be in the description of the video. Now, in the abstract, there are a few things which I would like to highlight. First, the current LLMs have a very limited context window, which hinders their utility in tasks like extended conversation and document analysis. That means that in these applications, we are actually limited by how much memory the model can hold. And as a result, we cannot work with, say, extremely large documents, for example, hundreds of pages. Now, in this paper, they're proposing something called virtual context management, which is taking inspiration from memory management in traditional operating systems. So essentially, you have different tiers of memory, and they are controlled by this memory management system. So in simple words, here is how it works. So you have the LLM. So let's assume the LLM in this case is GPT-4. Now it has a virtual context which comprises of two different components. One is the main context, that is the window or the context window of the LLM. So let's say for GPT-4, this is going to be around 8,000 tokens. The second component is the external context. And we're going to look at this in a little bit. Now. The most important part is that the LLM itself is self-aware. So it knows that it has a very limited context window. Now, when it sees that it's reaching its limit of this main context, so since it's self-aware, it will extract the most important information uh, from the main context and put them in this permanent external context. Now, in order to achieve this, it uses different functions which can both read and write this external context or external memory. Now, what exactly is this external context? So think of this as an external vector store where LLM is simply pushing the most important bits into that vector store. And whenever it needs, it reads this external context. Now, if you look at this table, you will see that different models have different context window or maximum number of tokens. So for example, the Llama 2 family has 4,000 tokens Quad 2 has 100,000 tokens, right? But using uh, this memory GPT concept, now you can theoretically expand the external context window to infinite memory. So that's the main idea in very simple terms. If you are interested in learning more about it, I'll put a link to the paper in the description. Now let's look at how we can run this on our local machine. Here's the GitHub repo of the memory GPT project. So first and foremost, we need to simply clone this repo. I'm going to copy this link. Okay, so here I opened another terminal and we are going to clone this repo. So we're going to use the git clone command, then provide the repo name in here and simply hit enter. Okay, so our repo is cloned. Now we simply need to go to this folder. Next, we are going to create a new virtual environment using conda create dash n, then the name of the virtual environment. So I'm simply calling it memgpt. And I want to use Python 3.10. So we already have this virtual environment created in my case, but I'm going to simply remove this existing virtual environment and create a new one. As you can see, the virtual environment is created. So in order to activate it, 
we're going to simply copy this paste it in here and now you can see that we are in the new virtual environment okay next we need to go and install all the required packages so we can do that using this pip install dash r requirements.txt i'm going to go back to my virtual environment and here we'll simply paste that command and run this okay so the installation is complete in here now if you are on windows you will need to do this extra step where you will need to install pi read line package next we need to set up the openai api key so there are two different commands depending on whether you are on windows or on mac so if you are on mac or linux you will use the export command if you are on windows you will need to use set then open AI key, api key and you provide your api key now since i am on mac so i'm going to be using the export command so all we need to do is just hit enter and that will set our open ai environment variable and after this video i'm going to simply uh, revoke this api key okay so before running memory gpt let's look at some of the options in here now in order to run it you simply need to type python uh, main.py that will run uh, the ai assistant and you can start chatting with it now it also supports chat with documents as well so we're going to look at that uh, that's uh, an example application however something that i want to highlight is in here so uh, this chatbot or memory gpt supports personas both for uh, the ai assistant as well as for the human so what you can do is uh, for example you can provide a persona so that's going to be basically a description of what the bot is supposed to look like or a talk like right so you simply provide that flag and then a reference to a text file where you set the different parameters for the persona and then it will adopt that persona similarly for human you can use this dash dash human flag uh, and you will need to provide an example text file and we're going to look at this like how you can actually change it another thing to keep in mind by default it's using gpt4 but there is support for gpt 3.5 so if you want to use gpt 3.5 turbo you're going to use this dash dash model flag right uh, but i think this is not as accurate as gpt4 but gpt4 will cost you a lot more money okay so now let's uh, run the actual memory gpt uh, model now in order to run it the first you need to simply invoke python and then we are going to call this uh, main.py file and let's run this okay so for the first time when you run it you actually see this message uh, boot up sequence complete persona activated testing messaging functionality and i'll show you to uh, how to change this uh, persona right so we simply need to hit enter then the model is thinking okay so the first message is coming from the model itself and it says hello chat welcome i am curious about your interest particularly in formula one and sailing could you share what drives your passion towards these activities so let's see where exactly this is coming from now for that we need to go back to the uh, folder that we cloned in the beginning and in there there is this memory gpt folder and within uh, that folder you will see two different folders so one is the personas and the other one is human so in this case if you go within the human there is this example folder uh, and within that you have two different files one is the basic.txt so here uh, the name is chad right so this is basically a basic file that uh, the llm is using or memory gpt is using in order to create the persona or here's another example and i think this is the one uh, that is being used uh, in the chat right and here the first name is chad right uh, the occupation is let's say computer science phd student at uc berkeley uh, interest are formula one sailing right so these are the things that are defined within this file right so you can actually modify these uh, and create a different persona for yourself similarly for the ai assistant the personas are within this personas folder so there are a few examples you can go in here and depending on the different applications that uh, we're going to be running it will adopt different personas so for example if you were uh, chatting with documents so i think it adopts this persona 
which says I'm an AI system designed to help a user with uh, document analysis, right? There is another persona uh, they, that they have added specifically for uh, GPT 3.5, right? So it says, my name is Sam, right? And you can basically define different parameters within uh, uh, a text file and just place that text file in here, right? So for example, if you want to create something like a Samantha, uh, so you simply need to create a text file that has that specific persona in here, and then you can use it as a part of your prompt. Okay, so let's go back to the chat and let's see we want to have a conversation with the model now. Now, the first thing I want to do is to correct the model and say that my name is not Chad. Now, what I did was I told it my name is not Chad, I'm Muhammad, right? And now you can see the thinking process. So it says, that's interesting. There seems to be an error in the human memory. So that's basically the human persona that it created. I need to correct this directly in the core memory. And it's essential to address each user correctly. Uh, their names is an important part of their identity. It looks at uh, the core memory and then it's going to replace the first name with the name that I provided. Here they're simply exposing the internal uh, thinking of the system. So now it says, now that I have corrected my memory, it's time to apologize to Muhammad uh, for the mistake and rephrase the question, right? Here's the message that it came up with. Apologies for the mix up, Muhammad. Let's start anew. And could you share what drives your passion towards Formula One and sailing, right? So now it's basically waiting for my response. Now, let's say if I continue this conversation and we are reaching the limit of the context window um, of GPT-4, what is going to happen? Uh, so here is an example that is provided in the paper. So let's say the user is chatting with uh, memory GPT or mem GPT, and it is almost uh, towards the end of the context window. So let, let's assume that it's like a very long conversation, right? Now, in that case, the system generates a warning saying that the conversation history will soon reach its maximum length and be trimmed. Make sure to save any important information from the conversation to your memory before it is removed, right? And that's when uh, the memory GPT appends its working context and stores key information regarding the conversation that it had so far. Uh, into the external uh, context or external memory. And whenever it needs any of this information, it will simply retrieve it from there. Okay, let me show you a couple of other neat things that you can do. So you can actually uh, continue this conversation um, with the model. Okay, so for example, I told it, and uh, always I'm actually interested in extreme sports like skydiving and paragliding. Okay, so again, it's simply updating its memory. And with the interest, now it's also adding uh, skydiving and paragliding. Okay, now here's the fun part. Uh, there are a few other interactive commands that you can use. So for example, there is this uh, slash save command, which will save a checkpoint of the current agent or conversation state. So let's uh, try to use this. Okay, so it uh, saved the checkpoint of the conversation uh, here to this JSON file. And it also saved the persistent manager to this path, right? Now let's uh, get out of this conversation and let's see if we can actually load this in a new conversation. So I'm gonna type uh, slash, slash exit. So this basically um, terminates uh, the program. Okay, so this is actually the best part. So what I did was I saved a checkpoint of my conversation with the agent. So what I'm going to do now is I will start that again. Now, what you can actually do is you can uh, go back and load the previous conversation and continue that conversation. Okay, so by default, when I um, like I started a new conversation, so it says, welcome, Chad. And then it goes on to say, hey, my name is uh, Sam, an explanatory companion, right? But let's do this. So let's go uh, type slash load then you can actually provide a checkpoint. But since I had a simply only one checkpoint, so it automatically looked at that and it said that no checkpoint specified. That's why loading the most recent checkpoint instead. And it loaded this checkpoint that we uh, stored before. Now let's ask it, what is my name? All right, so I did not create a new persona. 
but I'm using a previous checkpoint and let's see if it can remember my name. Okay, so it actually came up with the name Muhammad and it says there's no need to search for this information. It's already stored in the core memory and Muhammad, is probably, Muhammad probably wants to uh, check if I remember him or not, right? So this is basically the continuation of the previous conversation uh, that I had with the agent. Now, let's also see if it remembers any other information regarding me. So I'm asking it about my interest. Now, again, it's simply thinking and it's able to actually correctly retrieve my interests. So it says your interest includes extreme sports like skydiving and paragliding, right? And so on and so forth. Now, the great thing about this is it's not only able to have like a pretty huge memory because of this external context it's working with, but you are able to also store and load your previous conversations. So essentially you can continue the same conversation for a very long time without uh, worrying about the agent forgetting about you or your conversation, which I think makes it a very powerful system in itself. Now, apart from the chat functionality, they have a couple of other examples in here. So for example, you can chat with your documents. Uh, it can also compute um, embeddings and do rag, right? Here's an example uh, that talking to Lama index API documents, right? So you can look at these uh, examples yourself, or if there is interest, I will uh, create subsequent videos on using uh, memory GPT for chatting with the documents. Uh, and it seems like they're working on including support for open source large language model. This is an extremely useful project. Uh, and I look forward to creating more content on this. If you found this video useful, consider liking the video and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching. And as always, see you in the next one.